Hi, this is Ron Shira, and we are at the Outsider Folk Art Gallery in the Goggle Works facility in Reading, Pennsylvania. We're going to go in and take a look at the exhibit by Jim Bloom. I don't know, maybe try reinstalling and Jim is a self-taught artist who uh, spent a little bit of time in Tyler uh, School of Art down in Philadelphia but um, primarily didn't care too much for art school. Okay, and we are speaking with Emily Christensen, who is the assistant gallery director of the Outsider Folk Art Gallery here. And we're talking a little bit about uh, about Jim's work here. And I understand that that Jim had somewhat of a of a dysfunctional childhood. He had a rough time growing up. Um, did you want to? And talk about that and how it relates to his creative process. Sure. Well, I, I think Jim did have, um, he had a lot of issues growing up. Um, he had uh, a broken home um, and, and there was uh, um, a lot going on there. Um, he definitely did not have the, um, the American dream and perfect childhood, but I think it's, it's something that is also uh, um, relatable to a lot of people. He grew up in um, you know, middle class, um, pretty regular family from the outside, but there was a lot of stuff going on at home that he dealt with, and um, he was a very sensitive person. Um, he always was, was drawing as a child. Um, he wanted to be a writer. He went to Temple um, for um, a year to study film, actually. Um, he grew up in Allentown. He was born in Allentown and moved to Philadelphia to go to Temple to study film. Um, he left there um, after less than a year and um, wanted to be a writer. Um, and then um, one thing after the other, um, some, some years passed and um, he um, had some dependency issues and, and sought professional help and was um, prescribed some prescription medications um, and um, you know, put on some antipsychotics um, for some of those issues. Um, shortly thereafter, he was involved in a pretty serious car accident, um, and he um, sustained some injuries um, through that. And in recovery from from that car accident, he was diagnosed with a condition called dystonia, which is a movement disorder. It's actually the third most common movement disorder after Parkinson's and tremor, um, and it's characterized by prolonged. Um, painful muscle contraction um, and um, it's also listed as one of the possible side effects of the psychiatric medication he had been given um, a few years before and but it can also be caused by physical trauma so the, the cause, the direct cause of his, the, the onset of the condition was an, able to be determined by his doctors but it mm -hmm. left Jim um, pretty much confined to his home with physical injuries um, when he was first diagnosed and was still recovering from the injuries from the car accident. So it was really at that time that he first was able to really concentrate all of his creative energy that had been with him since childhood in various forms. Um, and he really at that point began to focus that creative energy and he really started to prolifically um, make art and get his feelings out um, through his artwork. Um, and so this show um, shows, um, we have a lot of new pieces here, but a lot of this work um, dates back from that first period, which was around 2002, um, that he really first began making art um, and has been starting using it as um, uh, almost a therapy or mm -hmm. release of, of a lot of the things that he's dealing with it physically and in his mind from childhood up through all the things that he's experienced in life. And like I said, he's a very sensitive, reflective, creative person. And so there's about that comes a out. hundred pieces in this show, is that correct? That's right. So here's your 
typical beer drinking swizzling dad sitting in his easy chair. This one is uh this one's called Suicide Attempt. Now a lot of his stuff too has collage elements where what he'll do is he'll take a uh, a piece of cardboard. He works with a lot of really um how would you say cheap and and um throwaway materials. Yeah. Uh, some some of the stuff is just I mean it, it, he's been um spoken to a number of times about get, uh, painting on canvas, but he's he's more comfortable with using cardboard and regular painting. Well, you know what, Ron? I I think that he is more comfortable. Um, but I think it's there's more to it than just that. Um, I think that he deliberately chooses his materials. I mean, it has to do with cost, but it has to do with the texture he's able to get using mm -hmm. cardboard. And I think it also has to do with um, his subject matter, which is a lot of times about physical frailty. These are not, mm -hmm. and and his own some of the struggles he's he's gone through and how he's feeling. Um, you know, they're very lowly materials, and um, a lot of his things about physical vulnerability and. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that those are specific choices he's making with this well, work. Yeah, and some of the stuff shows how, how literally contained and pushed into the background symbolically by the, uh, by the anger of things. Uh, there's some, um, you know, like some of these these uh, paintings have words on them that say, wait till your father gets home and uh, kick your faggoty, fag-kissing, fag-ass faggot. You know, I mean, it's there's uh, a lot of... Um, really um you know well i think with that one it's uh you know the guy's taking out the trash and the other guy's you know yelling that at him and it's it's an example of yeah i mean that's something that he, he you could hear any day and and it's the type of thing that no one likes to talk about but it happens all the time and right homophobic you know, and behavior and uh sure and you just, know and just you know hateful you know hateful behavior that someone could you know, say that to somebody else, you know, it happens all the time, and mm -hmm. and yet to see it put out there on a painting and permanently displayed is, is kind of shocking to a lot of people, mm -hmm. and yet it happens all the time, and I think that's part of what he's It's very out. disturbing, it's very, very, you know, and it, it is a lot of, uh, a lot of hatred um, that we have in our society for certain um, segments of our society, uh, gay, lesbian, uh, homosexual. So, wow. If you want to take a look at this, you, we have several of these large pieces um, that are entirely done on newspaper. You can see that this whole, he created a canvas for himself mm -hmm. out of sections of newspaper that he taped together with masking tape. Um, and it was a pretty um, inventive process. He took a lot of time to actually mm -hmm. rotate the spines of the sections that he used to give it more structural support. And we didn't mm -hmm. know that at first and spent a lot of time worrying about how we were going to hang the things and we were concerned mm -hmm. about them falling apart. And um, he said, well, you know, that's how they were made and that's how I made them and I want to have them shown that way. And again, I think a lot of it is about vulnerability and weakness. Um, and he chooses to work that way. Mm -hmm. In addition to... It's part of his aesthetic. Sure. And in addition to the fact that, you know, it's, uh, if you're confined to your house and can't go anywhere and have newspaper laying around, it's, it works. <laughs> so, that piece is about 9-11, he told me. Mm -hmm. um, you can see over here, there's a field. He described that as the field where that plane went down and Pennsylvania, and there's a government building to the right of it, you can see, um, and a lot of other stuff going on. There's a person with a gun with a backwards baseball cap, um, and then over here you have someone with a pipe.